In this video, we're going to be comparing a stethoscope used to deliver ozone in the ears versus a ear insufflation system. Uh, they're totally different. They may look similar, but we'll show you the differences. A stethoscope primarily is to listen to um, uh, whatever the heart or, or whatever the, the doc is listening to, and then because of that, they must seal this in the ear so that they have to accomplish a seal to get maximum um, ability to hear the sounds. So the first thing that's unique is that these are to seal in the ear, which is not what you want with the ear insufflation. You want free flow of ozone gas in and out. You don't want any pressure build up in all. So that's a major issue there. So to solve that, some people put a cotton 2x2 two two cotton gauze or they moisten a, a cotton gauze and put it in the ear underneath this. So they're defeating the purpose of the ozone by just trying to create an airway by putting cotton in there. So that's one significant thing. Compare it to the ear insufflation system. These are Teflon earbuds. We know that Teflon does not react to ozone at all. So you've got the difference between a sealing device and one that's a limiting device. It actually limits the in insertion into the ear to a continuous or a constant number. So you can see it only goes in that far. Where the other one, it can go in, depending upon how big the hole size in the ear is, the auditory canal, it'll go any, uh, any distance. So this is secured. And the second thing with this is that to be comfortable, we have these very, very small uh, silicone button, uh, tips that go on the earbud. We call this the earbud. And so that little soft, so it's very soft to the ear. It's gentle and kind. Again, it's limited to its, in, uh, to its intrusion into the ear. And also, it allows for flow. There's no ceiling here. This is not a ceiling thing. It's too big. It allows airflow. And not only the air go in, but it comes out. And we'll show you how it picks up the exhaust right here at the ears. So as it comes out, it's picked up the exhaust and goes through exhaust system. Right now, we're just going to pair um, ear insufflation system versus a stethoscope that's been modified for um, ear insufflation. So you say, okay, well, they both have stainless steel hoops. Well, they do. This is the stainless steel that most, and in fact, all users, they use stainless steel to deliver the ozone. However, this stainless steel is only for removing the expand ozone. It's only for evacuation. It's only for exhaust. And what we do is we have the Teflon bud. And inside that Teflon bud, all the way out the stainless steel, we have a Teflon tube. It's a one millimeter internal diameter. It fits in here real tight. And that goes connects to... Uh, your ozone source. So we're actually passing our ozone gas through this fine Teflon tube and the remainder of the space is used for this uh, suction vacuum to suck or remove the uh, vacuum off the spent gas as it comes out of the earbud into the little holes here. So we don't use a stainless steel to carry ozone. We only carry it to use the spent gases. So that's the big difference. Teflon earbuds, limited uh, size, deliver ozone in a very small, from a very small internal tubing and uh, little ear tips that go in there to make it comfortable. These don't seal and also we show you how they give you a vacuum effect as well. Very big difference between that and something that's supposed to be used for stethoscope, supposed to seal. So a big difference. The second difference is that uh, they use silicone. We only use, this device only uses Teflon. You can see inside, you can see a little shadow of a line that's the Teflon tubing that goes out through here, it comes into a Y, and then Teflon comes back to another Y and it joins together to form, to uh, go to the source with a one millimeter diameter uh, Teflon tube. So it's all Teflon with a little Kynar fitting here and there, but everything else is all Teflon all the way to the delivery point. Whereas this stethoscope is all silicone, all silicone all the way to the generator. Now both of these tubes are exactly the same length. They're both 36 inches, um, and they they are both 36 inches. And uh, however, the diameter is different. Um, the Teflon is one millimeter diameter. This is four millimeters diameter. It's hard to get much smaller diameter than than in silicone than this. That's not breakable. So you have to use at least a three millimeter, maybe four millimeter diameter uh, tubing to deliver whatever you're delivering. So 36 inches both, but different material and different diameter. Let's take a look and see how long it takes to get ozone from the generator to the ear. Let's put this aside. 
and we're going to connect this up to a analyzer and what we're doing is uh, using those holes in the earpieces and we're joining them into a Y and we connect that to our generate our, our analyzer so we can tell when the ozone arrives so you see how it's all connected there now we're going to connect this to the generator and currently we have oxygen flowing and so oxygen is flowing to clean out the system so we're all ready we're going to turn on the generator let's make sure the oxygen is flowing i believe it is it's at 130 second liter per minute so we're good there so we're going to start both the generator and the timer at the same time so we can find out how long it takes to get from from the generator to the analyzer so let's go ahead and uh, one, two, three, hit. Okay. So we're going to watch this. Now, we're, while we're watching that, the difference not only is the diameter, but also the difference is the material. And we've shown in earlier video, and if you haven't seen it yet, tubing makes a difference. Um, silicone, there must be a chemical reaction or something going on mechanically that uh, is greatly slowing down the progress of the ozone. Uh, we compared one millimeter uh, Teflon to one millimeter silicone, and there's like a, a 15, 10 to 15 percent difference. So right now we're waiting for the ozone. We're going to see here. You can tell when the ozone hits, and I'm going to push it when the um, ozone gets stabilized. It'll go up and it'll start to bounce back and forth, and we'll stop it at that point. So we're now into 45 seconds, and we see no sign. Now it's starting to begin to happen. We should have around 100. Um, and so let's continue to let that go until we get near 100 and we'll watch it until it stabilizes. So it's real slow and progressing. And meanwhile you're waiting, you're waiting and waiting. Now the patient's going to start maybe have a benefit right about now. That's about a minute into it. Um, we're looking at 90, what, 90.8. And it's bouncing back and forth. Let's call it 90.8. And uh, at 118 seconds, so we'll write that down here. And the ID of of the silicone was four, and it took uh, one minute 19 seconds to get from generator to the analyzer. Basic from generator to the ears. Okay, so let's take a look and see what an ear insufflator does. That's a stethoscope that's modified. Frankly, it's it's not appropriate. It shouldn't be used, but it's modified to be function as an ear insufflator. So when people say they don't work or it doesn't work, they're looking at this equipment that's been modified and it really uh, doesn't match. So let's take this one off. And, uh, excuse me, I need that in there, I believe. Oh, no, we don't. We don't need that. I think we can connect the other one directly. So let's take this out. Stubborn. And we got that off. Let's take this and put it aside. Turn this off. And we need to clean this out. So we fresh start. What I'm doing is pumping air in here just to flush out the ozone. And what it does this is a destructor right here? It's a manganese dioxide pellets in a Teflon uh, tube, and that's our destructor. It totally destructs all the ozone. So now we're clean. Let's get the other device here. We're going to move the little ear tip so that um, clean. Now we're going to put this on here so I can get to it. And this one here. And we go and we'll plug that in. Remember, this is one millimeter internal diameter. Uh, Teflon. We can connect it up. All right. Now I need to flush it again. Let's, let's see. Let it flush out with the oxygen because it's flowing right now. It'll come down to zero in a second. There's some uh, residual ozone in the line, so let's just let it flush out so we have a fair start. Okay, 119. We wrote that down. So let's reset. And we're getting flushed out here. There we go. So we're now we're at zero. Well, it's bouncing around, but we're getting close to zero. 
Okay, we're at zero. So now let's find out how long it takes to travel that 36 inches through the stethoscope to the analyzer. Let me turn them on at the same time. One, two, three. Okay. And we'll stop this when it hits, uh, when, it, when we get start getting a peak. First of all, the other peak was at, what we say it was, um, hmm, I don't remember what it was. We'll check it on the, on the, um, so we're already, look at that, we're at 170, 120, 122, 123, I think that's it right there. So in 19 seconds, we're at the peak, which is 122. The other one was 90, um, I can't remember what it was, 90, we'll check it again. Anyway, big difference, 30% difference, or 25 to 30% difference in amount of ozone delivered um, with a small diameter Teflon versus thicker diameter silicone. And as I said before, comparing silicone with uh, uh, Teflon, um, not only is there a time difference because of size, but there's a, a, a slower pace because of the chemical or some kind of mechanical reaction within there. And we show that in the other slide with Teflon or with tubing makes, makes a difference. So we see where we are. Let's turn off this, we'll flush it out. So let's write down some notes here. We had 120, was it 122? We'll call it 120. Um, and we were at 19.75, uh, 19, 19.75 seconds. So we we're at one minute and 19 seconds. And this is only 19 seconds. So that's one third of the time, maybe even one fourth of the time, uh, actually one fifth of the time to get for, through Teflon versus the uh, four millimeter. So you see it takes a minute and 20 seconds roughly versus 20 seconds. Um, and that's a huge difference. And if you're expecting to get therapeutic value out of that while you're waiting for this get home, you really can't start counting until you go to that one minute mark at least. Whereas here, um, usually our patients start to feel that initial uh, contact of ozone within six to eight seconds. Now this is at full, full peak, which we said was um, um, 120. Let's run it again to make sure. I'm going to run the other one too. So let's let's do that again. Get it up there. The other, this takes uh, just a few seconds, and we'll we'll have our number. Big difference between a, a, a stethoscope modified versus a, a, a piece of equipment that's designed for this. Okay, it's 120. We'll call it 121. Okay, and let's turn that off, clean that out. And while we're complete, while we're concluding, let's go ahead and, since we're fair is fair, let's do this one again. Let's see, move this off and flush this out. Okay, this needs to be flushed too. And we'll put this back on the other one. And we have, let's put these in here first. Have to connect them differently because they have different faces here. So let's put this aside, unplug that. And we're gonna put this one back connected on. Connect it. I believe we bled this one out, but let's make sure. Uh, we got. I'm gonna turn it up so we can get some air through there, or oxygen through there to clean it out. Sorry, we're just pumping out the uh, residual ozone in that too. Just like we did with Teflon, I've got it at um, one quarter flow to do that. Okay, now we're back to one thirty second. So we're on thirty second flow right now, and we're gonna reset this. And we want to remember to take the peak reading and amount of time to get there. So let's time that again. One, two, three. Big difference between st stainless steel stethoscope and uh, air insufflation device. So if they're just using stainless steel stethoscope, it's really not very efficient, not effective, and who knows what's going on with the chemicals of the stainless and the silicone, etc. 
not, let, not to mention that the amount of time it takes to get from uh, there to the ears. So we're gonna, we'll stop it at its, when it hits peak, and I think our peak was around 90 something, I just don't remember what it was. And we were, what, I took it a minute and 19 seconds to get to that peak, so we've got some time yet to go. Yeah, we're gonna start to move now. And we're gonna, remember, we're gonna catch it at our peak, so we've, it's a slow rise. Again, it's just the nature of the, the turbulence through the tubing or whatever it is, the chemistry, whatever it is. Okay, so we know that it was around 90, something or the 95. Looks like we're starting to stabilize. Yeah, we're still going. 90.5, 3.5, 2.5, 3.5. Let's call it right there. So uh, one minute and 50, 15 seconds. So that's pretty close. And then we're at um, 90. It was, I think we had 90 again. So this is uh, microgram per mmL. This is UGML. So, and that was uh, 90. So we have 90 versus 121. That's 30% difference. Deliver to the ears versus deliver to the ears. The amount of time, one minute, 15, 19 seconds versus 20 seconds. Big difference. So a size of tubing is important, but we'll show you, we showed you in the other video of the uh, Teflon versus uh, silicone. Big difference in the um, both material and size. We know that the silicone, or the typical stethoscope you, that's converted, it's got silicone tubing, it's got stainless steel that the ozone is going through. The ear tips are rubber or plastic. They're meant to seal. They're not, not meant to let air pass by. They, they want to seal. And um, they have a carbonate, pla carbon, uh, carboxylate uh, plastic uh, connectors, or, or kynar, basically the same. And whereas the system here has uh, PTFE, which is Teflon, and kynar door locks, and that's it. Everything else, the contact with ozone is it just this is it. This is the man, this is the only contact with ozone. Big difference, big difference between the two. Here you're you're delivering a whole lot more ozone, much faster, and uh, here it's much slower, and you're losing what 30% of of the ozone by the time it finally gets to the ears. One more issue about this. Um, let's turn that off. This one has, as we talked about, the ports on here that take that um, vacuum the. Uh, spent ozone. So let's connect it up as we were run we would be running it. Connected to ozone here. And then it has a tube that connects to this underneath. And um, actually it's this one here. So it connects there. Remember, this is your suction line, your vacuum line. If you're in a dental office, you already have a saliva ejector, so you can use your saliva ejector connected to this. That's your vacuum. But if you aren't in a dental office, um, you can attach it to a pump. We've got a pump inside this little system, right in the back, right in here. And the pump you can hear. We'll turn it on. And that's the sound of the pump. And it's pulling the ozone as it exits the ear. It's sucked into these little holes goes through the silicone tubing, all the way through the silicone tubing till it comes to this device here, and that is a muffler combined with a destructor before it hits the pump. If we don't have um, a muffler there, it's loud. So we just muffle it here, and, and the, as far as the person with the ear insulator, is, there's no sound at all. So it's a great system, and if you use this uh, mini comprehensive unit here, you can carry around the office, it's got its own built-in pump, all you have is one plug-in, and, um, and the air insulator and you're good to go. So I hope this helps you looking at systems, one that's made for ears, and the other one that's modified uh, stethoscope being used as an ear insulator, which you can see there's a huge difference. Thank you for your time and look forward to having you visit the other videos on tubing and other issues that uh, we need to be looking at in ozone de delivery.